Hello, wine drinking people. It's Saturday, April 24th. And you know what that means, Saturday. It's time for the Saturday dance. All right. <clears throat> well, we had a big day in the store yesterday. Not so much with uh, suppliers stopping by. We only had two suppliers. But we had our Brunello tasting last night where we opened up about 15, 16 wines from Montalcino. But first, in the store, we had the people from Palm Bay stop by. Palm Bay's got a collection of outstanding Italian wines. And uh, we had some nice, light, crisp, refreshing Italian whites. And it's getting hot out there. These wines are very refreshing, lower in alcohol, and nice wines to have sitting out by the pool or on the 150-foot yacht or wherever it is you're planning on drinking them in the afternoon in the hot sun. Uh, the Taruzzi and Pothode, Rondolina, Vermentino de San, G San Gimignano. I just like to say that. That's uh, the only DOCG for white in Tuscany. And uh, this wine, very light, very refreshing, clean nose, pears, green apple fruit, a uh, little bit of mineral to that, whetstone. Uh, light spritz on the tongue, uh, which leaves your, your mouth salivating for food. Uh, nice zesty finish. Very nice and a light price tag at just like $13.50. Then we had a little Vermentino di Sardinia. Vermentino uh, you find in Tuscany and mo most of the white wine produced in Sardinia, Sardinia is Vermentino. Very nice. You get a little more of that sea salt kind of character to it, that briny character in Sardinia. But this, nice, this wine was also nice and refreshing, light, crisp, clean. A uh, little bit more of that gravelly, a little bit more lemon citrus to it, but uh, very nice, refreshing. A uh, little bit more finished. This wine was a little bigger and about 20 bucks a bottle. Uh, a little bit more on the, the wallet as well. Then a Torbato, which uh, Italy has about 2,000 grape varietals that they know about. I can't tell you how many times a producer has walked in the store here and said, Andrew, we're the only people that make this varietal. And uh, this is what they told me at Sella in Mosca. They're the only people that make this varietal. The marketing department not very happy about that. You've got the only flag out there in the world. <laughs> You've got a big job to do promoting this. The wine was very interesting, very unique. I had kind of a light, light nutty character to it, uh, a little bit of a herbal note to it, very nice gravelly minerality to it, very distinct. Uh, when people ask me to compare this to something, I don't know what I would compare it to, you know, because it's one of these Italian unique varietals that there really is uh, nothing like it. Uh, but very interesting and around $20 a bottle. Then we had the Tira de Tufi, one of the more famous wines uh, from Tuscany, one of the first super Tuscan whites. Uh, this wine is Vernaccia and Chardonnay, uh, a little bit richer than the other wines. Uh, now they've got a very aggressive price program uh, and programming on this wine. You can get it. It used to be over $20. Now it's, it's like $15 a bottle. A really nice little wine at that price. And then the Cananao. Cananao is uh, a wine from Sardinia. And Sardinia is one of the blue zones. I don't know if you guys have heard about the blue zones. They're areas in the world where you have more people living over 100 years old. And one of the things they attribute this to is drinking wine while you're having dinner. That's right, folks. Wine is good for you. The Surgeon General recommends three to five glasses per day so to keep you in good health. And Cananao supposedly has one of the highest concentrations of antioxidants, one of the things in wine that is good for you. So drink your Cananao every day and you'll live to be 100. Okay, uh, next up we had Chris Covalo. Chris used to work in the store. He started his own company, Christopher Scott Selections, and he focuses on small production Oregon wines. Not a great concept, I know, as for a distributor, but he's got some interesting wines. We're always trying to help Chris out. He had Emerson uh, vineyards from the Willamette Inn. Um, kind of nice Pinot Gris, nice Pinot Noirs, light, uh, really, I don't know if we want to say understated because they're they're very inexpensive and we did have a 2007 vintage wine, which you guys know how I feel about 2007 in Oregon. Light, savory, not really going anywhere, what we call a restaurant vintage. So, um, nice wines. Check it out. On a, check the reviews out online on our email today. Now, the big event last night, our Brunello tasting, 2000. We had wines represented from 2004, 2005, 2006, and 2007 on the table. We started out with two Brunellos. Thank you, Pat Carmody, for bringing by the Pian del Vin and the Col de Orcha. We sold some Col de Orcha, Orcha last night. That means people like the wine. And thank you, Serge. So... <clears throat> Usually you don't start with Brunello, but like I said, Pat kind of brought these by last minute. 
Uh, so we used those as reception wines. And then at our sit-down portion of the tasting, we started with the Rosso de Montalcino. Every estate in Montalcino makes two wines, a lot like they do in Bordeaux. The first wine, Brunello de Montalcino. The second, Rosso de Montalcino. So these are the younger vines in the estate. Maybe the wines, uh, the barrels that don't taste quite up to par, they declassify into Rosso, which is a DOC. And then the top wines are set aside for Brunello. We were featuring the first wines to arrive from the 2005 vintage at our tasting last night. 2005, uh, well, we had three estates, Castello de Romatorio, uh, Val di Cava, and Canalicchio de Sopra, which if anybody's stopping by tonight, we still got a couple things open here with wine left in the bottles. So uh, if, you didn't, if you missed the tasting last night, you can taste a few of these today in the store if you want to stop by. Okay, Canalicchio de Sopra and Val di Cava are two of the people... Uh, that started making wine in the 60s, and really uh, there wasn't anybody before that. Beyond Asante has been around for over 100 years, but they held the Brunello flag alone for 70 years, pretty much. And then the 60s, you started to see these other producers crop up, and Canalicchi and De Sopra, very traditional producer, as is Val de Cava. A lot of people look at Val de Cava's wines because they're dark in color and say, these wines are non-traditional. But with Sangiovese, very hard to get color. Vincenzo's worked very hard with his colonial selections, getting small berries, so the ratio of juice to skin uh, is, is higher. Uh, for the skin actual ratio, and then getting very, very low yields. You need to crop Sangiovese very low, very low yields to get intense color. Uh, so very different wines. I love them both. And then the Castello de Romatorio, a newer producer, they began in, in the 1980s and uh, making excellent wines. I don't want to say a cross between new and old, but they use Tonneau instead of Barriques, which are twice the size of Barriques. And you don't want a lot of wood contact with Sangiovese, or most producers don't. So the bigger the barrel, the less wood contact you're going to get. The wine of the night for me, well, it's, whenever you have Madonna del Piano on the table, the Reserva wine from Val Cava, that's going to be one of the wines of the night. Castello di Romatorio Reserva 04. This is the second time I've had these wines side by side. I still think it edges out the Val Cava. Sorry, Vincenzo. But uh, these guys are making very good wines here. And uh, the Val Cava, outstanding. It's about $100 more than the uh, Romatorio wine. So check these wines out on today's email. You've got a complete review of all 15 some odd wines that we had last night at our Brunello tasting. Tony did a great job with the food. That Pappardelle pasta was outstanding. Once again, the duck confit. Mm, one of my favorite things that you make, honey. And then that burrata dish. This is something we had with Rob Sweeney, Rob and Jeannie at the first time at their house. You had a little bruschetta rub with mm, garlic, a little bit of raccoli rapini, and then the burrata warmed right on top. Beautiful. Ah, what are we drinking tonight? Well, it's the end of the week for me. I just showed you my Saturday dance earlier, and uh, we've got a private event in somebody's home tonight. We're going to be showing 20 vintages of Tenuta Ornalaya with Axel Heinz, the winemaker. That should be fun. You Check it out on Tuesday's show. We'll give you a complete review of that. And what are we trying to sell you today? Today, we have got, we're promoting an event that's happening in two weeks. And this is a, a very special tasting we're going to have in the store, so we only have 16 seats available. We will be showcasing a dozen wines from the 1997 vintage from Italy. Most of this tasting will focus on Tuscany. Uh, we have Ornalaya, we have Tignanello, some big dogs, and then we have some simple wines, Chianti Classico Reserva from Felsina, uh, and some other things just to show you the range of how the, the, the lesser wines and then the big dogs are showing 13 years on Check it out on today's email, winding things up for the week. I'm your host, Andrew Lampasone, saying remember, always drink the good stuff first.